632 Chicago, presented by Bet River Sportsbook. Good morning and happy NFL Sunday. I'm Caitlin Sharkey, and this is Props and Locks. We'll get you set for all the best NFL odds and bets this morning with week one of the NFL season. All odds courtesy of the Bet Rivers Sportsbook. Helping me out each week, VEASAN expert Danny Burke. And Danny, let's not waste any time this morning and jump right in with our first game. The Bears, of course, visiting the Detroit Lions. Now, taking a look at the numbers for this one, the Bears are a two and a half point underdog. The over under initially opened at 44 for this one. Now it's at 42 and a half. The money line for the Bears plus 110 and minus 134 for Detroit. Danny, these numbers changed a bit leading up to today. Yeah, we've really seen this one fluctuate, Caitlin. First of all, let's just say how excited we are to have NFL Week 1 football here. This one opened up with Detroit laying one and a half. Trubisky was announced as starter, and then the Sharps kind of took it as a, okay, you're going to play Mitch Trubisky yet again. This guy hasn't proven anything. The line bumped up to minus three in favor of the Lions. Now we've seen a little bit late buyback on the Bears. But remember, Trubisky played great against Detroit last season, threw for over 500 yards, six touchdowns, and one interception. Like you said, we see this line now two and a half in favor of Detroit. How about the total, though, as well? This one opened up at 44, dropped down to 42 and a half. We're seeing a bunch of the attention naturally going the way of Chicago at Bat Rivers. A lot of liability with the spread in Chicago, getting under that key number of three. But a big factor, too, Matt Stafford, dominant last season before he got taken out with his injury. He was on pace for almost 5,000 passing yards. But the Lions do have some notable injuries, too. Jeffrey Akuda in the secondary, he's going to be out. The top draft pick for the Lions and star receiver Kenny Galladay. So potential for Trubisky and the Bears to feast off of this Lions team that's been weakened. But also no Robert Quinn for the Bears as well. So a lot of the Sharps liking the Lions in this game. When you look at the over-under for this one, like we said, 42 and a half, is this something when you look at week one of the season, there's so many uncertainties. We haven't seen tape on these teams. We haven't seen preseason games. Is that something you shy away from looking at those points? totals or do you think it's something that they can do personally in week one regardless I'm a little bit hesitant on these totals I think a big factor that everybody has to include when they're handicapping these games none of these teams had any preseason games right so I guess the big question is what side of the ball is going to be able to gear up quicker is it going to be the defense is it going to be the offense with a team like the Bears and Trubisky, there's just so many questions already. What kind of offense is this team going to have? Is Nagy going to implement the run right out of the gate? We know there were some issues with Montgomery in the offseason, kind of with injuries. Looks like he should be good to go. But what kind of offense is this Bears team going to have? It could be a slower-paced game, especially with more injuries now for the Lions in their receiving core. The Sharps also attacked the under in the spot, as we said, around that 44 area. Now at about 42 and a half. You might have missed the boat on the under, but that's the way some of the smart money has been heading on the under. All right. Well, we stay in the NFC North for game two. The Packers at the Vikings. Aaron Rodgers in the pack, the two and a half point underdog. The over under here at 45. Danny, it's not very often that we see Aaron Rodgers as an underdog to start a season. No, how about it? And, and here's the thing. Everybody's been hammering Aaron Rodgers, saying he's showing signs of regression, and that he's slowing down. Statistically, yeah, that happened briefly last season. But every time you count this guy out, you still got to remember who he is. He's Aaron Rodgers, one of, if not the most talented quarterbacks in the league. This one opened up with the Vikings laying three and a half. We've seen it drop a full point to now Minnesota laying two and a half. Remember, offensively, these teams are probably neck and neck pretty even. But defensively, that's where the Vikings really have the advantage this year, in my opinion. The Packers didn't do anything in the draft to help out Aaron Rodgers. There's been kind of some criticism and, and speculation what's going to happen with LaFleur and Rodgers. They're saying they're all buddy-buddy, but of course they're going to say that. I'm liking the Vikings in this spot. You get them below the key number of three, I think their defense wins out in this game. And just offensively, they're a little bit more talented. I think Kirk Cousins and the Vikings get the job done here lane two and a half. A close one to watch for sure. Game three is a battle of two marquee quarterbacks. Tom Brady with his new team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, taking on Drew Brees and the Saints. The Saints laying three and a half for this opener. First time since 03, Tom Brady has been an underdog in week one. Over under is at 47 and a half. Is there a safe bet for this one? We talk about Tom Brady with a new team, but it is Tom Brady. Is there a safe bet for this one, Danny? 
Well, I don't know if there's such thing as a safe bet, but you make a great point. Tom Brady has not been an underdog since back in 2015, over 70 games, the highest in the Super Bowl era. So it's going to be unique to see Tom Brady in a different jersey, but he's got great talent around him. They pick up Leonard Fournette to add in the backfield that already had Shady McCoy and Ronald Jones. You also bring his buddy Gronk in the mix. Mike Evans looks like he's good to go along with Chris Godwin. However, don't be so bearish on the Saints in this game. While they won't have their fans to back him up in the Superdome, this is a premium price you can can get with the Saints laying three and a half maybe buy down the hook if it's available or if you're going to see some later money but I would buy low on the Saints in this spot don't hype on that Tom Brady train just yet we got to see him fit in absolutely well time for a quick break more games and props ahead if you want to get in on the action make sure you go to betrivers.com to place your bets and for all the up-to-date info we'll be back after this props and locks on Fox 32 presented by bet rivers sportsbook Place your legal sports bet at BetRivers.com, your new home for football betting. The most football betting options on the sports you love. We offer live in-game betting on every pro football game in the U.S. We have tons of bets available during games from point spreads, over-unders, money lines, prop bets, and many more. Use one of our 12 easy deposit methods to get in on the action. And when you win, we pay fast. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, more action, more fun. Place your sports bets at BetRivers.com. Place your legal sports bets at BetRivers.com. Your new home for sports betting. Millions of betting options a year on the sports you love. We offer live in-game betting on major sporting events worldwide. We have tons of bets available during games from money lines, point spreads, prop bets, play-by-play -play bets, and many more. BetRivers.com offers live streaming of events worldwide. That's right. You can bet on the game as you're watching. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $250. More bets, more action, more fun. Place your sports bets at BetRivers.com. We're back with more Props and Locks, presented by Bet Rivers Sportsbook. Welcome back to Props and Locks. I'm Caitlin Sharkey, joined by VEASAN expert Danny Burke. And Danny, let's continue with a quick look at some other big games happening around the league today. The Baltimore Ravens laying seven and a half against the Cleveland Browns. Danny, this is one of the bigger spreads we see this week. It really is, Caitlin, and this has been a fascinating game to kind of watch unfold on the side of the odds because the Ravens opened up as a nine-point favorite. Remember, it's a week one divisional matchup, no preseason. That's a lot to lay in week one. I don't care who you're playing. It's a divisional matchup. The Browns still have so much talent on their side. Yes, they have a new coaching staff with Stefanski taking the reins, but you can't imagine they're going to get any worse. Then again, we say that every year, and the Browns do Browns things. <laughs> Regardless, the Sharps came in heavy on Cleveland here. Now we've seen it drop to about eight or seven and a half teams that went four and six the prior year Cleveland falls into this category are an outstanding 70 percent against the spread in their week one games I took the eight points with the Browns it's dropped to about seven and a half now you're still getting over the key number of seven a lot of the sharps including myself not call myself a sharp but just saying a lot of people like Cleveland in the spot Caitlin all right next up Seahawks at the Falcons Hawks were favored by two and a half that spread down to one now over under at 49 Seattle has won three of the past four meetings between these two teams How how do we feel about that one point spread? So this is another kind of crazy game that's been going up and down and up and down all week, Caitlin. The Seahawks, like you said, opened up as a one-point favorite. When as high as laying three in this matchup at Bat Rivers, we really saw that tick so high up. Now that we were looking earlier this morning, all the attention going back the other way toward the Falcons. So once again, the Seahawks just a narrow favorite in this game. Everybody, the public, they love to jump on the Seahawks. That's where a bunch of the public money's been going. Once it got to that key number of three, the Sharps attacked that. The Falcons still have a dynamic dynamic offense that can really just come alive at any given moment. The latter half of the season last year, they went on a great streak, had some impressive wins. A lot of people thinking that carries over, myself included, but this is more so of a prime teaser opportunity. You want to tease the Falcons up as a short home dog, get them through that key number of three or seven, and pair them with another team. That's the best look I would have for this game. All right, well, plenty of betting buzz for this next game, and it makes perfect sense. The Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Carolina Panthers. The Raiders lane three over under at 47 and a half, but Danny, when you're talking over under, the Raiders were a pretty low-scoring team last season. Is this something you look to avoid? 
I, for me, once again, it, it's kind of you just got to see how week one develops. You have seen the total tick up about a half point. It opened at about 47 at most shops at Bet Rivers, like you said, now 47 and a half. The most intriguing part about it is just seeing so much love go to the Raiders. Everybody and their sister is betting Las Vegas. All the hype around a new team in Sin City, all of those books on the West Coast in Las Vegas have a bunch of liability like they usually see with the Golden Knights. Imagine that, but even more so now with the Raiders. So a lot of the public is going to be on uh, Las Vegas here. Total wise, you haven't seen it move too much. This Raiders defense is susceptible to giving up a lot of points. Can Carolina with Teddy Bridgewater in charge lead him that way? I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think. So the Sharps are leaning toward taking the points with Carolina now that you were getting three. We'll see how this one ends up. But like I said, a bunch of the public will be rooting out Las Vegas in game one. Absolutely. The Cardinals and NFC champion 49ers. San Francisco, the six and a half point favorite. What do we think about this spread? Yes, San Fran is good, but are they that good? Well, that's the big question. Not only that, but what kind of Super Bowl hangover will they potentially have? This one opened up with San Francisco laying seven and a half. The total was at 46. This one's ticked up two and a half points now to 48 and a half. However, the spread's gone the opposite way. Now the 49ers, like you said, are laying six and a half. So not only is it interesting to see what's going to happen with the so-called Super Bowl hangover, but get this, the Cardinals haven't won a game in September the past two years. So they don't need to win this game regardless to cover. Now that it's under that key number of seven, I think the ship has kind of sailed on the Cardinals in the spot. Once once again, though, a great teaser opportunity if you want to bring the 49ers down to where you pretty much just need them to win. That's the best angle I would look at between the Cardinals and the 49ers. All right, let's look at the prop shelf. Talking Bears again. Here's two props for you, Danny. Khalil Mack to win Defensive Player of the Year plus 1,500. And Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles combined for 35-plus touchdown passes during the regular season plus 2,000. Any of these a lock in your mind? Well, these are a little bit tougher because they're long shots, so I wouldn't necessarily call it a lock, of course, but Khalil Mack might be a viable option, and that's just because you're adding in Robert Quinn, who's unfortunately not going to play week one, but you're assuming he's going to be there for a majority of the season. You also have Akeem Hicks. If he can stay healthy, that opens up so many doors and a lot more opportunities than Khalil Mack, so he's not singled out and taken advantage of like we saw last year. So 15-1 to for him might be the right move. As for the number of touchdown passes thrown, the Bears have never gone over that mark in their history. I wouldn't count on it this season once again we kind of got to see what this offense is going to look like and just how often Trubisky and or Foles is going to play we know Trubisky's a go for week one but is he going to make it beyond for the long haul I would steer clear of that save your money keep it in your bankroll and look to bet game straight up and if to kind of wrap things up Danny if you had to take a look at the overall week one summary how would you approach betting this week because there are so many unknowns Really, the main thing is, while we're all excited for NFL to be back, be careful with your bankroll. It's a long season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Be smart with your bets, and also don't be afraid to take advantage of in-game opportunities. Once you get a feel for the game, that's when you can pull the trigger and start making a profit. All right. Well, thank you, Danny, and thank you for joining us on Props and Locks. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m., and make sure you place those bets at BetRivers.com. Fox Kickoff Sunday is next. Kickoff Sunday is brought to you by Hyundai. Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Lease the 2020 Tucson for $169 a month. Now with complimentary maintenance. Visit buyhyundai.com today. We live with AT&T and we are well past the honeymoon phase. Occupado, Tom. AT&T, what's this I hear about you advertising a 100% fiber network? Only like a fraction of my customers can get that. That's it? You have such a glass half empty attitude. The glass is more than half empty. You need to relax, Tom. Oh. Tom, you need a little Tom time. You know, a little TT. Stop living with AT&T. Xfinity delivers gig speeds to more homes than 